Tom here from Learn Systems, and we're going to do a video today on how to set up permissions in TrueNAS Core. Specifically, I'm going to be using TrueNAS Core 13 Release Candidate 1 because it's almost out, or maybe by the time you're watching this video, it is out. Now, this is pretty much the same as how you would do it in TrueNAS Core 12, the current release as of April 2022, but there's really not any differences in the products overall when it comes to the permissions. The goal is going to be, though, to teach you how to create a data set, then apply permissions to that data set based on the user you want to be the primary user, adding that primary user to a group, setting a group permissions, and adding another user so two different people can share. You can keep adding more users and progress from there. This is to set you up with the base of understanding of how to do that. Everything is time indexed down below, so you can jump around to the part that maybe you were stuck on in this process, but please note, if you do things out of order, you may have unexpected results. So if you choose to skip parts of this video, make sure you've done those parts prior to skipping them. This is some of the problems people run into when I see forum posts or people contact us for consulting about permissions in TrueNAS Core is they didn't do all of the steps or doing them in the right order because, well, these are important steps to get in the right order. Simple as that. Now, before we dive into the details of this video, let's first... Are you an individual or company looking for support on a network engineering, storage, or virtualization project? Is your company or internal IT team looking for someone to proactively monitor your system security or offer strategic guidance to keep your IT systems operating smoothly? Not only would we love to help consult on your project, we also offer fully managed or co-managed IT service plans for businesses in need of IT administration or IT teams in need of additional support. With our expert install team, we can also assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning projects. If any of this piques your interest, fill out our Hire Us form at lawrencesystems.com so we can start crafting a solution that works for you. If you're not interested in hiring us, but you're looking for other ways you want to support this channel, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. And now back to our content. Now, the first thing we want to do is make sure we have our users. So we're going to go over to users and we have Marcus and we have Tom. At least one user needs to be created, and maybe that's as far as you need. It's just one user for permissions, but we're going to build this on the idea that we have Tom and we have Marcus, and we want to put them into the editors group. So both of these users will have read-write permission in this particular share that we're going to create. So we'll look at the groups. Now, easy enough to add a group and create one, group ID, create the name here, and we're going to cancel because we already have one done, and that's this one here. Expand out here, click members, Put the people you want in this group that we're going to be assigning to this share in here for the group members. So we have the Tom and Marcus group member. If you add more users, you would just bring them over here. By the way, root will not work properly. So don't ever use root as part of this, even though this is where a lot of people get stuck thinking you can put root in there because you'll find a forum post that references it. Yes, in the old versions of TrueNAS, that was an option. That looks like an option because you can do it, but it won't work properly and often where people get themselves stuck. Next, we want to actually create the spot for the share. So we go to storage, then pools, and we click the three dots on the pool to we add a data set. It is best to create a data set for each different types of sharing and permissions you want. The reason for this is the share level permission data is stored within the data set. So if you had a completely different set of parameters that you wanted for another share, creating another data set for that share would be ideal. Although you can nest data sets together. And we'll kind of mention that here when I get to the permissions, because there's an option that you can check to set all of them in groups instead of all of them individually, but they can be nested together. Now we're going to call this one YouTube demo. Now I use an underscore because I just don't like spaces in there. It helps when you're navigating from the command line, but also important, don't put a space or any special characters after that may get in there. I have had some head scratching moments doing consulting when I couldn't see the space because of the way it's displayed and realized someone had just added an extra space or special character from copying pasting afterwards and Samba may not parse it properly. Therefore, your permissions will have some weird results. So take the time to type that in because it is parsed. It is something you want to make sure you get right and not anything extra. The comments, you can do whatever you want. So we can call this you do permissions and whatever you want for spaces and such. And I guess we'll capitalize the T because I think that's how it's supposed to look. Going down, nothing else we really have to do here. Choosing SMB because this is the share type we're going to have. We're going to go ahead and hit submit. So now we've created that. 
Next thing we want to do is the permissions themselves. Go back, click three dots, edit permissions. It will default to having root here because when you create new data sets, root is the default owner. We're going to change that to Tom. As you start typing, it will auto-complete. Check the apply user box. Then we'll put editors. Start typing, it'll auto-complete. Check the apply group box. So now we've applied user, applied group. We'll select an ACL preset of restricted. There's different options you can do here, but these presets will control the parameters on the side here. If you want to get more advanced and it's out of scope of this video, yes, you can get granular with the ACL items and do more extended and more enhanced features from there. Scrolling down, apply permissions recursively. will apply these permissions to any data that may be in there. Now, the next thing you have is the apply permissions to child data sets. You can nest data sets together. And the reason you may want to do that is because you want different parameters, different settings per data set, not just folders when you're creating a share and everything down there. So you may want to have a series of nested data sets. So you could set maybe a snapshot policy differently for a subfolder versus the main folder. That would have to make it as a data set. They present all as folders inside of the share, but this apply child data set is so the permissions you set here can apply downward. Or maybe you want to create a series of data sets where you have different permissions, then you wouldn't check that. The last thing I want to mention is the strip ACLs. If you have gotten yourself into a mess and you've done this a few times, but um, you keep trying to reapply them, stripping all the ACLs means strip all of the access control lists off of anything that's within here so you can start over. This does not affect the data, only the permissions on the data if there's existing data in there. So that's sometimes a good way to start over and go back and fix permissions. Now we're going to hit save. And now we've created the YouTube demo data set. But before we do the share, I want snapshots on this particular data set. So we're going to go over here to tasks and set up a snapshot task. Periodic snapshot tasks, add, choose the data set. We're going to choose the YouTube demo one. Snapshot lifetime of two weeks, I will say two hours. You can hit the help button here. It'll tell you some different parameters, weeks, months. There's different parameters, of maybe how long you want to keep the snapshots for how often you want them to run, we're going to do custom because we want them to run every minute and every hour. This is more than most people want them to run, but you can see they're going to be running once a minute here. Now, snapshots are only as big as the differential of the data between snapshots. So there's not much data being taken up by the snapshot itself. So if there's 100 gigs of data and at each minute I add only one gig of data, the reference to snapshot grows by one gig, not 101 gigs. This is important to remember, and this is what allows you to have a lot of snapshots without them taking up a lot of space. The other advantage of snapshots is Samba will present them inside of Windows as a volume shadow copy, an immutable volume shadow copy. So people in Windows will be able to restore their previous versions, but they will have no access to delete them because only the admin on SureNAS itself through the web UI here can actually manipulate the snapshots or if you SSH in from the command line. Allow taking of empty snapshots, I'm going to uncheck because I only want the snapshots to occur if it finds there's new data. If there's no new data, the snapshot doesn't need to take place. Now, this isn't really about space saving. This is about making it more concise because if you had all the empty snapshots and people are looking for the last time something was changed when they're trying to restore a volume shadow copy, they would see all the list of them and they have to know what time to look. With the not taking any empty snapshots, the snapshots look, if there's no difference in changes in data, the snapshot just doesn't happen. So you end up with a list based on when the data was changed. So we're going to go ahead and hit submit. And so now this is set to pending and within one minute, it will go ahead and start creating snapshots, even though there's no data been put in here yet. All right, now I waited till there's at least one snapshot in here because this can sometimes be a problem when you're creating a share. If there are no snapshots, and we're gonna go over here to Windows Share and we're gonna add the share and we're just gonna span out the advanced options. By default, the enable shadow copies is checked. But if this share is created and it sees no snapshots until Samba's restarted at least once, if it never seen a snapshot there and there was zero snapshots, this service doesn't always run. It goes, oh, I don't see any on there. But once it realizes there's one, it starts working again. This is kind of a quirk you can run into where you create a data set with no snapshots. You set all this up and do have the shadow copy enabled. Then you later add the snapshots. The 
snapshots are happening and the data is being snapshotted, but they may not be presenting in volume shadow copy. Simply start and stop the Samba service without changing the share parameters at all, and it will work. Now we're going to go ahead and expand this out to create the share itself. Mount, choose the YouTube demo ACL. An ACL is present in this path is what it tells you. The reason it's saying that is to let you know that that's how it's going to base its permissions. So any of these that have the ACL, Samba reads the ACL of that, and that's what controls the users. It's not anything in here that sets the users who can or cannot access. It's reading the ACLs to generate that list to control who can or cannot access this data. Please note, we didn't need to expand the advanced. We're still using the default share parameters and we expanded it to show this. So there's no other boxes we're gonna check. There are plenty more advanced things you can do, such as denying and allowing and building restrictions, but for simplicity, we're just gonna hit submit. Now we're gonna to go to Windows and mount the share. So go here. We're gonna double click this shortcut and we're gonna go ahead and log in. Now it will use your default Windows credentials that you have set up. I purposely don't have them set up in this one so I can log in as different users. So we're gonna hit OK. The YouTube demo is the share and there it is. And we're gonna go ahead and copy some data into it. Let it copy over. And there it is. Now. Right now I did this as the user Tom. So we're actually going to log out of Windows and log back in so we can log in as user Marcus and show that Marcus will have now permissions for this. So we're gonna go ahead and close this. Restart this particular computer. That way we don't have any stale connections uh, from there. Windows occasionally will hold on to permissions that it's seen set instead of actually logging out properly. There's ways you can get around it. Restarting it is a guaranteed way to make sure that those permissions are unset. Go back into TrueNAS, choose Marcus. Go back into the YouTube demo. And there's all that data we just copied over. Now we can even do things such as go to properties, security. It'll take a second and we can see that it is owned by FreeNAS Tom. And the editors group has the permissions on there as well, which Marcus is a member of the editors group. This is what allows Marcus to be able to go into these particular folders. Pretty simple. So now Marcus is going to delete all the data out of there. So now that's gone. Um, yeah, we'll just leave that one there. We'll leave the presentations. Maybe we'll delete this folder too. All right, Marcus has now deleted some of the data. Now we're gonna go ahead and show you how to restore that data that Marcus deleted. And that's actually just like you would in any other Windows where it's connected to its own server like a windows server where you have the volume shadow copies enabled and we're going to go ahead and hit restore previous versions and because there was data changed at these points right here we can then open up to this copy the data if we want be able to see it here or just go ahead and restore it i can actually copy it over there now when it's doing the volume shadow copies, as I said, they're immutable to the users because they're actually not volume shadow copies. They're snapshots presented as volume shadow copies, which means I can try to delete these all I want. I'm hitting delete. I can right click and do a delete, but it just will not delete these particular files here. So it's pretty straightforward. Actually, we can just hit restore. So all those files will go back, hit restore. It's been restored to its previous version and there's all those files. Really straightforward how to get this going and get it working. Now, the next thing I'm going to mention, Marcus is not a member of video production because this is a separate share that I already have set up. You notice that there is no ability for Marcus to access video production, for example, but he can't access YouTube demo. Let's do one more thing here. We're going to go over to groups. We're going to go back to the editors group here. Look at the members. We're going to take Marcus out of that group and hit save. So now the permissions are lost. He should no longer have access to this. But this is where things get a little confusing with Windows because we removed him from the group, but he still has those permissions from that were hanging on. So we've applied it, but there's still a authentication permission that hasn't been removed. But if we restart this computer and log back in,
Now Marcus cannot get in here anymore because we've lost that token and we can't reinitiate a new token. The opposite is true. So right now Marcus cannot get in, but we're going to go back over to TrueNAS, go back to our editors group members, hit save. Marcus now has permissions to log in, but we go back over to Windows. Windows still continually will say you don't have permissions. So it does work where once you remove it until they've lost their token and logged in and out, they still have permissions because they had it originally. But the opposite is now true of we've added their permission back. But once Windows has decided there's no permissions in here, it's going to keep doing this. The solution to this is going to be simply And we'll just do a sign out and back in, which should work. And now Marcus is able to get back into it. This part sometimes is where people get stuck on this because it is a little bit confusing. And certainly a little aggravating that when you change some of the permissions, if you don't log in and out, the communications doesn't seem to be there that allows the system to say, oh, okay, you have done a change on the back end, so we should just allow it in there. I'm not uh, versed enough, so to speak, in some of the more command line ways you could do this in Windows. I know someone's going to say, well, you don't have to log out time. You could just uh, go from the command line and uh, clear out the token that was on there for authentication. This works a little bit different if you actually have a Windows Active Directory server connected on the back end and you're using the sharing on Windows. But I wanted to clarify, this is how it works when you're tying it to a Samba server so people understand that, oh, I added the users and I changed the permissions, but I still can't get in. Try logging in and out or restarting the Windows computer you're connecting with. So hopefully that helps when you're doing some of the troubleshooting. And uh, thanks. More discussion in the forums and let me know what comments, concerns you have about this video. Appreciate it. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the hire us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.